However, the the Board of Governors meeting also brought along some rule changes that we're going to see in 2024. All VAR decisions will be made or announced, I should say, in the stadium over the PA system. Second, the clock in the stadium will now be uh, continuous into stoppage time. So it doesn't just stop at 90 and say plus six, and then you're guessing. The MLS Next Pro injury rule that they implemented before coming to MLS, if a player is on the ground with an injury, real or not, for more than 15 seconds, the ref will stop play, wave the medical crew on to evaluate the player, and the player must stay off for two minutes before returning to play. Fourth, time substitution rules. If you're not off the pitch within 10 seconds of that subboard being flashed uh, by any point of the field, the sub that's supposed to be coming onto the field is held for 60 seconds and will enter at the next stop. So you can't like, you know, take 25 seconds to get off the field, win the ball back, and then just boot it out of play and now he's in. He's got a full minute to wait before the next restart. And then finally, return to play equity. If two players go down with a head injury, they will both re-enter at the same time once they have both been cleared to play. And I guess one by one, let's just go through and and share our thoughts on this. I mean, there's not too much to dive into, but what are your thoughts on on that first one about VAR decisions being made in stadium announcements? It reminds me, when I I was reading that in the article, I was laughing because I was like, this is just, this feels so American football. It's like the refs getting on the PA system being like, the call on the field stands. And then the crowd starts cheering or booing. That's the only thing I thought of when I read the VAR thing. I just imagine someone reading over the VAR decision on the whatever PA system and people will be upset or whatever on it. But I I guess it gives a little bit more transparency to the people in the stadium. Obviously, the people watching at home have like a lot more views and you get to hear from the commentators, but when you're in the stadium, I guess it's a bit more unclear at times. So I definitely think it's a good thing to add in, but probably not a major thing either. Yeah, for me, it didn't really make any big like, oh, man, I can't wait. Some people love it, and I, I do understand why. Um, the end of the Red Bull FCC match was super confusing when we were there in person. We didn't know if he called a foul. We didn't know if he went to, you know, have VAR in his, in his ear. We, we didn't know any. Of it. Um, so it is a, a nice little bit of clarity. Everybody's like, oh my God, you're trying to Americanize the game. They did it at the Women's World Cup. It was fine. It didn't, it, like I said, you didn't look at the Women's World Cup, watch that and be like, oh my God, I'm never watching this because uh, they, they make announcements by, by VAR into this. You know, people will complain about it because they're, they're, it's not Europe and Europe isn't doing it, so we shouldn't do it. It doesn't. It doesn't mean it. Secondly, oh, yeah. if this, sorry, I was go just going to say, if this is Europe, they would be applauding it. Oh wow, this is great. They really care about their fans. This is an incredible thing for them to do. But if it's you know, like you said, if it's MLS that does it, they're just trying to Americanize the sport. Well, it's it's just really funny, I and mean, we'll we'll take a, a you know a wider approach to this that the uh, the sin bin rule that's been used in literally every English grassroots and is about to go into the Premier League next year. It gets mentioned that MLS is going to be the first league to do it, and we're automatically an unserious league again. It's like this is literally a European directive. Like the Europeans decided this was something we should do, and we just start in February. Like, get over yourself. <laughs> Anyways, uh, clock going into stoppage time, massive dump. It was insane when we were at the playoff game, not knowing how much longer we needed to hold on or how much time we would get to get one back. When that ball, when the ball went out for the corner before that whole confusing thing in the Red Bull game, I had no idea how much time it elapsed. I didn't know if we were 14 minutes over time. I didn't know if we had just started stoppage time. Like, that's how crazy it is in the stadium. So having that clock go would be so good. You know what I would say? It it just feels weird that these things weren't already introduced. Like, right. these, These feel like really basic things to improve the quality of actually being at a game. It's like, I think, you know, you and I probably take a lot for granted when we're just watching at home. Like you get the clock, you get all of the commentary on VAR decisions. You know, you probably get, they bring in the former referee that tells you about his opinion on the VAR decision. So like you're, you're very well informed, but I feel like when you're at the game and I get it to some extent, you just want to be in the immersion at the game, you know, just listen to the sound crowd and all of that, but you're kind of left in the dark and 
I'm glad that they're like adding in these little quality of life things for people that are actually attending the games in person. Yeah, and that, and that's what it's all about. Like the the viewers at home, they've got the clock running next to you know in the in the graphic at the stadium. It you're right. I'm surprised that they didn't have it already. Moving on to the injury rule, I really like this. You know, may, maybe your soccer peers who don't want the sin bin or, or whatever think it's too progressive anyway because uh, that's how the game has always been played. Whatever. I think it's great. This avoids the long rolling around, time wasting, um, all that stuff that people give football crap for anyway. And if they choose to do it, they're punished for it. So I think it's a big win. I like this. No, I agree too. I, I think it's good that we're prioritizing focusing on people who in the case that they're actually injured, that we're actually like giving them proper medical attention. And, you know, I, I know obviously like the head injuries are very important and, you know, they have already protocols in there for that, but I think it's almost just as important if someone goes down with like a serious leg injury or knee injury that they get the attention that they need. It shouldn't take like the ball going out of play for someone who just tore their ACL. They like get checked out. Like that seems a little bit ridiculous. So I'm glad they added this in and, to your point before, if someone wants to time waste and fake an injury for 15 seconds, they then have to sit out on the sideline for two minutes. So it's a net loss for them in that case. And it, it's still a 15-second period. So it's not like you go down for five seconds, you're like stopping a team that's on the break. Like <clears throat> they will have time to still finish their attack. And who knows what the referees are even going to do? I'm sure, you know, they're not timing it to the exact 15 seconds. Like I'm sure they're going to be like giving it a rough guesstimate. Well, I'm, I'm sure the VAR is probably going to have a, a clock on it. Uh, mm, that's true. You know, that's that's why you have all those eyes anyway. But either way, big win. Um, I like the time sub rule too. Speedy changes, keep the game flowing, prevent the silly time wasting for the, oh, I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I'm standing at the corner of the field. I'm going to jog all the way across yeah. at the slowest pace <laughs> ever. Maybe get a yellow. Maybe the referee walks by and laughs with me as we're jogging away. You know, I, I like this one. I'm I'm a big fan of the... Uh, this whole you got you got to do what you can to stop this and it's proven effective in MLS next pro it, it'll be effective here yeah i just don't see how anybody could be upset with a rule like that like I, how much are you gaining by watching a player just stroll off the field give everybody a hug and a high five and you know he gives his he gives his little jog every once in a while just to make the ref happy and make it look like he's moving at a little bit of a quicker pace it just sucks like it just kills the momentum of the game just to watch someone like just cuts around on the field for, you know, 30 seconds before they get off. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm on board with you there. The only one I'm a little cautious about is this same re-entry. On paper, great. Make sure that they're treated, make sure that they've got proper, you know, attention, whatever. But here, here's a scenario that I can see where it can get a little manipulated. You're up a goal, five minutes to go. You've got your you're absorbing pressure, you're trying to see out a game. Maybe it's a playoff game. You play with three center backs, and one of them just went up with a header with their only striker. They play with a lone striker. He's the only one going to ball in the air. They knock heads. They're both out. Striker comes off the field, gets treated. He's ready to go. But they don't have any subs left. So now you're telling your doctor, hey, take a, take a little bit extra time with our center back. Make sure he's got, he's got really, really clear. I want to make sure he's very, very safe. <laughs> and now it's, you know, 30 seconds left in the game. The ball's held off in the corner. They're like, okay, now we're good to go. So I could see that being a little bit manipulative, but at the end of the day, I, I do like that they're trying to avoid the whole, okay, he's out. Their center back is out. Take him off. Look at him really quick. Okay, he doesn't look like he's about to pass out. Throw him back on the field, right? You're taking the time to properly look at him. Yeah, no, there's, there's good and bad to this one, I think, too. Um, I think it's... I think it's good that it's not like a race anymore to get someone out to try to get the advantage. You know, it's a head injury. It's very serious. They should definitely take it seriously. But to your exact point, I feel like it, it feels a little bit like you could manipulate the rule a little bit. Like, what if you're, you know, the one that jumped up and you initiated the contact, you hit someone else's head, you both have the head injury, you come off. And it's, it's now like, okay, you were the player that did not initiate but you were cleared like pretty quickly. The other guy who initiated the contact is now like out for a couple minutes. Now you're stuck on the sideline, even though you did absolutely nothing. 
like I, I just don't think even that's not like necessarily intentional, but that just doesn't feel very fair. Uh, I didn't even think about the intentional factor of it until you mentioned it, but that's a great point as well. Yeah, I'm I'm a cynic. What can I say? <laughs> All right, we'll do anything to win. So it's a valid yeah. cynicism.